Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. I think my voice is slowly coming back. Um, I, I uh, This is going to be a supply video and I'm going to kind of try to demystify tools for you a little bit. Um, but I'm going to show you some of my favorites and, and uh, also open it up to discussion because I'm curious. I'm, I'm going to be shopping for supplies l literally today or over the next couple of days and buying a bunch of new stuff. So, I mean, I can do um, some uh, tests of the stuff online if you want. But, but I grabbed out kind of what is in my main circulation right now. But this is a very expensive group of supplies like for for someone who is like i want to get into uh drawing comics and i want to ink some of my own stuff you 100,000 percent do not need all this stuff i've accumulated it over a period of time so just to be clear don't let this freak you out because i'm going to dumb it down and show you really what you can get away with and i've done it in other videos but it's always good to uh revisit it so anyway first things first um i would say let's talk about pens so i i my main pen that I prefer if I'm going to be inking anything um, with uh, a, a, a pen with a tip is I really do actually like the Copic Multiliners. But but honestly, there's just one that I use. It's the 0.1. This is by far the most versatile of the group. I, I This is all my opinion. Um, uh, it's the one that can get very thin lines, but it can also, you know, you can sculpt with it and get a little thicker. You could get the 0.2. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of their brush, uh, pen, or I guess this is a brush small. Um, the, oh, well, there's a one that's super small. I think it's the point oh three. Let me open this real quick. I'm going to set this down for one sec. No. Oh, that might be the thin one. I, I like the O1 to me is their best pen. Anything thinner, I'll recommend something else in a second. Um, but uh it's it's uh these are great pens they're a little expensive um you can get spare nibs for them and and look even in my own stupidity and and um unawareness when i originally bought these and i bought like backup supplies for them i didn't really know what to get so i got a little bit of everything and uh you know like th this is what i need it's empty but, but um, these other ones, I don't even use these pens, so I've got extra nibs for pens that I don't even really touch. Um, and these are the cartridges, the ink cartridges for them. So you can see here, there's an ink, ink cartridge A and an ink cartridge B. And what it is, is they fit certain sizes of the pen. So this is a replacement ink for the 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Um, and then the A is for the thinner pen. So really what I need is I need to buy uh, a bunch of spare nibs for my 0.1 and that the a replacement ink so for ink this is the ink that i use it's really really simple you can get it in bigger bottles but this is this is my go-to this is a three-quarter fluid ounce ultra draw it's great ink there's a universal version like universal versus ultra draw ultra draw um won't coagulate as much so it's more forgiving if you're going to use tech pens all right so i do use tech pens for um uh lines that i want to go down and stay down and will scan pretty accurately these are very expensive pens though um even used they're starting to get pretty expensive but um you know, I've been doing my panel borders digitally now. So if I'm if I'm inking on a blue line, I'll actually drop the panel borders in um, with black ink um, on the board. So when I print out the blue line, the panel borders are done because uh, I think it just looks tighter. Um, and if, if for some reason I wanted a more organic uh, looking line, then I could use pens because essentially what it is is the texture of the paper and the pen will have little anomalies, little little um, deviations of the line, even though it's it's a fairly straight line. So. Um, then these were pickups for Comic-Con, from Comic-Con this year. So this is a Windsor Newton, um, well, let me see what it's called, Fine Liner. These are good. I haven't found myself gravitating towards them too much. And again, I got the 0.1 because that's my size. That's the size that I like. Um, the pink rapidograph actually goes thinner. Um, that's a 0.4. And then I, I call this baby blue. But baby blue is a 6 times 0. And it's, I think, a 0.18. Uh, oh, 0.13. Um, so anyway, but the, again, those are real. like the pink and the blue pens are really, really expensive. Um, and then this was another pen that I got. And these I've been using a tiny bit more. Um, and these are 
graphite fine liners. Um, so essentially what it was is the art dealer that I used to go to, supply dealer, this isn't Holbein I'm talking about. This is a different company. Um, they were actually the Copic um, seller. Uh, they lost the Copic license, so they're trying a bunch of new tools from all over the world. Um, and uh, these were their two most popular, uh, this is what the, the sales guy told me, um, of the pens that they're using. So the sizes that I got are well, I got 1.0s. I was kind of desperate at the con. I had brought a bunch of Microns, and they weren't working very good, um, even though I had tested them all. For whatever reason, the paper just wasn't taking the ink. Um, so my main pencil now is I generally use this, which is the Ren Zero um, Pentel 0.2. It's very, very thin lead. Um, but this is, this is my main drawing pencil. But if I'm using drafting pencils... This is my lead of choice, is the turquoise. I don't like barrel. Comes in the white package with like the blue edge. It, I, I don't think it's very good lead. And in fact, I had someone actually come up and, and they had been using it and weren't happy with the lead. So it kind of reaffirmed my opinion of it, which is that it's it's substandard. So this is just a bottle that I keep my ink in. But I actually did used to use Pelican Touche A uh, drawing ink. And it is good ink. I would totally buy it again. Most inks, when you buy them, are a little bit watery, meaning if you put it down on a piece of paper straight out of the bottle, it won't be as jet black as people kind of want. But the trick to that is just use old ink, which is what this bottle is. So this is ink in that bottle, is ink that I've had sitting out on my desk uh, that had gotten thicker, and I just kind of always keep it to the side. I even keep it in a bigger bottle, which I can show you. I use a lot of ink, so I mean... But, so I have this, which is just some, some random bottle that was in our house, but um, that's all what I call Mississippi mud too, which is older ink that's thicker, blacker, and that's the trick. They're like people that talk about blends and blah, blah, blah. Old ink will go down jet black. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Any ink, <laughs> as it evaporates the, the water in it, it gets thicker. And when it gets thicker, there's more pigment in it and it goes down black, all right? So we've we've broken the the fantasy of that you need to have some sort of super interesting. So speedball, speedball is more of a matte finish to me. Um, the Eon ink, I don't even really know how to describe it. I don't use it that often, but I I would maybe say that it leans maybe towards a speedball type characteristic. I could be off on that. Um, I do I do occasionally use it, but um, the big one is a quite expensive bottle of ink. I, I'd be guessing, but I think that was like 80 bucks. I don't know. I, I mean, I've definitely used it, but uh, I mean, I bought this a year or two ago and it's probably 80% of the way full, maybe even 90. Um, I, like I said, this is my go-to, but I know people have recommended other inks, so you can drop that in the comment below. So, uh, Holbein, this is my white ink, but they also have a super opaque black ink. So I'm going to try that. I haven't, uh, cracked it open yet, but, um, so this is the size that I generally buy my white ink in. Um, this I'll use for special effects, speed lines, um, and it flows basically like ink. So it's quite good. And then they sell it in a smaller bottle. I don't remember the price. I want to say the big bottle is somewhere between 15 and 25. I could be wrong on that. And then maybe the small smaller bottles are 5 to 7. But it'll last you a little while, a month or two. The big bottle lasts me probably three or four months. I use Speedball, Croquels, Hunt 102s. Um, I have a whole bunch of other vintage nibs, um, but I'm not going to like overwhelm you with all that stuff right now. But this is a pretty simple, uh, you know, like a versatile tool. It, it will get the job done. And uh, if you have a good nib, you know, they're nice and sharp. And I've showed this before, but I just use the brown pen holders. The little thing on it is basically, I think I just saw one actually. Let's see if I can spot it. <laughs> it's just like a little rubber, foam rubber. Uh, what was it? I literally just saw Oh, this. This is what it looked like when it was new. <laughs> this one's a little dusty, but yeah, it's just a, for like a kid's pencil. But I would recommend the foam ones. It, it seems to, uh, you know, like do the job. And, and there's other textures of them. All right, so I love this. This is a great, great pen. I don't use it for brush work, though, but this is a Kuretake uh, brush pen. I'm pretty sure it's Kuretake. Um, and I use this for filling in blacks. So um, it is reach fillable. Like, I can actually load this full of ink and use it like a pen. 
um, you know, where I just, I don't need to keep dipping it, but I actually prefer dipping it into my own ink. Um, my brushes, I, you know, I generally, this is a Winsor Newton, but, but honestly, I generally do use Raphael's, even though I prefer Winsor Newton's, but I have a ton of brushes, like brand new brushes. So I just kind of grab them out. I'm not that particular about it. I, I kind of feel like, um, I, I control the tool, not the other way around. So a decent brush, I can usually make a pretty good brush. These are just, um, pens, you know? high tech C. I don't know. I probably heard someone use these and grabbed them. I don't generally use them, but I mean, you could totally ink with like a ballpoint pen too. Um, if you'd like, so this is where it gets kind of interesting is let me scoot this in for a sec. A guy. And if you watch this video person, I can't remember your name off the top of my head. Um, I met a guy at a comic book convention that was really into like these old fountain pens and he gave me a bunch. I think that there's even more but they're all like these old school drawing pens. Um, and uh, hold on, I'm gonna set my phone down or let me do this. I'm gonna pause this for one second. Uh, I'm hoping, I think it's recording upside down. It might not matter for the pen, but I'll show you these. So these are different drawing pens, like old school drawing pens that you fill with ink, like fountain pens, I guess you would call them. Um, they don't really get super fine lines, but they are interesting. Um, there's no doubt about it. And I know that people collect these, you know, let me try to focus this. Again, I apologize if it's upside down. It really shouldn't matter that much just looking at these pen tips. But um, it was a really, really nice gift uh, that this guy brought for me. And um, I, I did used to use this one. I don't know the names of all the different, uh, like, cartridges and whatnot. And that was one of the things I wanted. I think we used to talk through Facebook. Um, and I tried to look him up. It's been a few years. But um, really, really nice gift. He gave me this bottle of, like, special ink. It all looks quite magical, you know, like like wizard tools or something. But this is sort of like, this is your deep game. You know what I mean? You get into this stuff when you're a pro and... and uh, you know, you're trying, I don't know, trying to impress your peers online. Like, if I showed this in a photo, people would ooh and ah, and it's like, it's not really my uh, thing. <laughs> I just try to do good art and, and, and keep it keep it on that point. Um, but anyway, so I got a bunch of these. I really think that there's actually quite a few more. They may be out, but uh, yeah, it was really nice. I think he gave me about 10 of them. So anyway, I hope that that kind of somewhat explains generally what I use, but, but you could get away with probably two of these Copic multi-liners, a Hunt 102, an ink that you enjoy. You don't need these because you could do panel borders with these. You get like a 0.3. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe microns if, if you want, like, like I like, the, so the size of microns I use, the, there's only really three. I, I, they they have more that they sell, but these are hands down the ones I use the most. So the 005 is good for fine lines. The 01, again, is similar to the Copic Multiliner. Just, it's a very versatile, good size. You can get super fine lines with it, but also sculpt something a bit bigger. And then I use the 08 for like thick lines. There's a 05 and 03. I really kind of find them pointless. There's even a 02, I believe, um, that was like, it kind of wasn't as available when I initially got into the pens, but now it's, it's a little more normal uh, to find them. But uh, yeah, you know, you could get two 005s, an 01 and an 08 and be set. So you could, you could get what you need. You should definitely get a white ink you don't have to get this but um i would definitely recommend that you have at least one um acrylic white for um corrections and special effects so so i hope that that kind of somewhat shows like the potential of what you could use and and again if i open this drawer below me i have so many art supplies in it so many pens i've got dyes and colored pencils and watercolor pencils and acrylic paint and oil paints and i've got um, uh, like, what are they, like, oil-based, like, um, not chalk, I can't think of what you call it, something, <laughs> I've got probably 200 Prismacolor pens, the color ones, 
grayscale, all that, and then you know another couple hundred Copics. But again, it's just all stuff that I acquired over a, a series of years. So, um, yeah, recommend anything that you want me to check out on uh, in the comments, and I will buy the stuff and and I'll do reviews of them and, and let you know what I think. It'll be fun. I've got a little tiny bit of mad money, so let's spend it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll spend it together. <laughs> but yeah, give me recommendations for tools to buy. And and also, if you know a site where it's the most affordable, that would help. Because, I, I mean, obviously, I do want to save money. I'm not, like, flush with cash. But, I mean, I, I need to get, you know, more ink. I need to get um, uh, just a little bit of everything. And, and I, I, I would love to try some new things. So, all right. Have a great day. I'll talk to you all later. Oh, we, let's talk about comics for a second for people hanging in here till the end of the video. So, uh, shoot. You know what? Let me pause this and I'll grab out uh, something. Okay, I'm back. So, um, Dave Kopecki, who is on Facebook, um, and there's a Wildstorm. It's a closed group, but, I mean, it's, it's not closed where, like, you can't get in. Um, but uh, he put together um, kind of like an artist edition of Nick Manabat's work in black and white. And there's a sketchbook section in it. Um, really, really cool kind of tribute to Nick Manabat. If you don't know him, um, uh, the comic book Death Blow was a flip book, meaning that that if you flipped it over, there was two two comics. So Death Blow was one, and then Cybernary was the other. And Nick Manabat was a young Filipino artist uh, who was just incredibly talented, um, had highly, highly detailed art. And sadly, he had cancer and died when he was probably 23 or 24 years old. So look, I'm going to just put it out there because I was thinking about this yesterday. There's a lot of fucking complaining that goes on online. If you're alive and you're somewhat healthy right now, you're in a good spot. So always be thankful and, and realize that there's people that aren't here that should be. So if you're still here, enjoy it. Stop, stop complaining about things. Enjoy what you do. Work hard. And, and uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's sometimes easy to lose sight of that. But here's a guy who, you know, he, he died like 20, 25 years ago. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it was, it was probably that long ago. This book was probably drawn in like 92 and he passed away in probably 95. So 24 years ago. It's sad. So, um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think comics right now is in an incredibly awesome place. You have all this amazing stuff. You have social media. You have YouTube. You have Instagram. I mean, you can see art and comics all the time. And there's a bazillion YouTube channels that follow comics and do reviews. And there's people that are that are um, creating their own comic books and writing their own comic books and meeting other people online and doing comic books. You've got Patreon comic books. I mean, it's it's really exciting. Um, I, I think it's a really like it's kind of like the music industry. It's in it's in a, a more healthy uh, place than you might think. It's just money is coming from a lot of different avenues. So, just looking at sales numbers uh, in in terms of numbers, it, it, they they are low. But but I think um, that that is one thing that that always trips me out because there is it, it, it's like you're talking about the Earth, like the planet Earth. Uh, it amazes me that that like even an average comic. I'm not talking about like a Marvel or DC book. Just just a book in general, that that you can't sell five thousand, ten thousand copies to individual people. Not not talking multiples, but you know what I mean. Like like to me, like like if I, I like just using this Nick Manabat stuff as an example, I, I find it hard to believe that there wouldn't be ten thousand people on the planet Earth that wouldn't buy this. You know. I think back in the day, the book was ordered at like a million, uh, like Death Blow when, when the image books, but everybody was buying like five copies, you know, that's the thing. But anyway, but yeah, so it's a little taste of that. And you may still be able to order some. I don't know if they're actually going to do a second print of it, but um, 
Anyway, that was something that was available before Comic-Con, and uh, I picked it up, and uh, it's, it's very cool. So this is kind of neat. I got the um, the Mignola um, 25 Years of Covers Hellboy book, um, and it's Mike Mignola and other artists. But what was really neat is, so I bought this Wednesday before the show opened, and Mike signed it for me, but he actually said this was the very, very first copy of this book that he ever signed. So it was kind of a neat little... Um, thing and I, I was able to talk with him for five or ten minutes and uh had a really really good conversation with him um and uh I really kind of laid it on the line I was I was real complimentary towards his work and I explained to him how it had, it had really been a part of my whole kind of comic uh not only fandom but sort of journey and uh you know how impactful it was it was really really cool and uh I'm always nervous when I talk to him, but funny enough, and I don't really get nervous around too many professionals, but some of the, <laughs> I don't know if you call it elder statesmen, but, but they're a little more intense sometimes than some of the other artists that you meet. So yeah, I was like, I always walk on eggshells when I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking to him and it's not because of him. It's me. It's, it's like something that I project out where I'm like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to say something stupid or, or, uh, you know, but anyway, all these covers you've seen, but, uh, it, it looks really, really good. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I, I, I love his covers, so should be fun. Some Corbin. I think it's Corbin, yeah. I saw some Kevin Nolan in here. But the lion's share is Mignola, but, but uh, I'm fine with, like, other covers. That's really cool. And then I also picked up um, his 2019 sketchbook, and I'll wrap this up. So, yeah. If you're out there, and you're healthy, and you have two arms and two legs, or even just some of those limbs be thankful all right you can still live your dreams and you can still pursue stuff it just takes hard work that's all consistency and hard work that's the bottom line if i if i ever was going to instill anything in anyone is you know like when i got into drawing i knew i was going to do it for like 50 years and and in a weird way uh, it kind of made it more simple because it's like I just always am trying to get better but I don't I, there's not like a rush to do it or like a panic it's just like just keep trying to learn new things keep trying to get your stuff a little better keep trying to branch out and grow and uh you know good things will come and and uh, that long game really kind of dominates everything the flash in the pan and all that stuff. It's like, those are really like very, very tiny windows when you start looking at a large body of work. And, uh, that's really what it kind of ultimately boils down to is, is bring the goods again and again. All right, I'm going to go. I think the camera just switched off. Uh, probably did. Bye.